Hello there, I'm the Kali Crusader. I'm here with a short weapons and armor video, but this time I wanted to discuss something outside the realms of fiction and take a look at something from my home state, the state sword of South Carolina. Now, you might be wondering why the title of this video says The Swords of South Carolina and not just the Sword of South Carolina. This is not a typo, and I'll explain why. For those of you who may not be familiar with this topic, there are actually three swords that have been used as the State Sword of South Carolina. The first sword was the original sword that was used for the longest time until it was stolen in 1941. It's potentially still out there somewhere, or it was melted down for the silver. We really don't know what's become of it. After the original sword was stolen, a Civil War cavalry saber from the Charleston Museum was used until the third and current sword was given to the state by Edward Wood, the first Earl of Halifax, who was a British ambassador to the states. For this video, I only intend on looking at the first and third swords since their styles are more in line with medieval-like swords. On top of that, I couldn't find out much about the cavalry saber that was used as the second state sword, things like facts or images. The image I'm using now is just a stand-in because I don't know what it actually looked like. Let's start with the original sword. The image I'll be using is the only image I could find of it, and it comes from the FBI Stolen Art Database. According to the description, it's a silver sword or a steel sword with a silver hilt and a wavy blade, the type of blade you'd find on flambridge swords or flame swords you'd see from the late medieval period and renaissance period. Its origins are a bit of a mystery as well. Some historians think it was crafted by a silversmith in Charlestown, now known as Charleston, since it had no markings one would see from a sword forged in Europe. However, others think the design is too complex to have been made by an artisan in the colonies and was instead made elsewhere. Whatever the case, I think it's neatly designed. With how the hilt and blade are shaped, it does give the sword a unique appearance. You can look at the sword and be like, now this is an important and special sword. Had this sword been around in the medieval or renaissance period, I could see an important person like a noble or a lord carrying a sword like this as a sign of their status. Now, based on the approximate measurements that are posted in the FBI database, the sword is about 50 inches in length. The blade is about 42 inches, with the hilt being about 8 inches, so how would I classify this sword? Overall, I'm pretty sure this sword is a long sword based on its approximate length. How useful or practical would this sword be in combat? To put it simply, I'd say it'd be on par with your average straight long sword. I've never used a wavy blade before, so the best I could do is do a bit of googling and research before forming some conclusions. I found some things that seem a bit outlandish. For instance, the wavy blade creates vibrations that hurt your opponent's hands when their blade clashes with the wavy blade. I don't know, that to me seems a little bit out there. To clarify, I'm not saying that this claim is impossible. There may be some truth to this idea that a vibration can be created when another sword clashes with a wavy blade. However, since I've never used a wavy blade myself, I can't verify it. Maybe one of you might have some more knowledge about this claim. However, something that seems to be a bit more believable is the idea that a wavy blade would increase the cutting performance of the blade. Scala Gladiatoria has made a video discussing this idea. However, I'll sum up some of his points in support of this idea. Basically, the waves can create points where force can be concentrated during a chop, and the blade's design can be used to bite into someone or something like a saw. Now, even if this is the case, I have seen an argument that says the wavy blade doesn't necessarily have a significant advantage over straight blades in terms of cutting capacity. Add to this that wavy swords are in the minority when compared to other blade types. This is most likely due to the fact that these blades would be harder to make and maintain. In light of this, I would like to believe that even if wavy blades do increase the cutting potential of a sword, it is not a significant enough advantage over the more common straight blades to cause a shift in armaments where everybody would be using it. If anything, due to the complexity of the design, wavy blades were more likely meant to serve as a kind of status symbol. In summary, I could see the original state sword being used by a noble or a wealthier individual who wants to bring a little flair to the battlefield. Whether or not it would be better at cutting than your average longsword is up for debate. Still, it looks pretty good. Now for the third and current sword. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any exact or approximate measurements for the sword. However, after having looked at it in the hands of the former sergeant-in-arms, I want to say that the sword 
is most likely an arming sword of the longer variety. It could potentially be a hand and a half sword with how long the grip is and the potential to grip the pommel and hold the sword with two hands. However, without measurements, I can't make any definitive conclusions. Anyways, I think this is another neatly crafted sword. The state flower, the yellow jasmine, and the state seal are engraved on the blade, and the hilt is fairly simple. It's not as striking as the original sword, but I absolutely love that simplistic look to it. It just has a decent profile to it. I'd say this blade would be practical for combat as well. If you paired it with a shield, this would look great in the hands of a knight with some status to his name. Overall, I think both blades look pretty good and are practically designed, and since they have that ornate flair to them, I could see nobles or knights carrying these swords around with them as a status symbol and a sign of their authority and power. That's all I have to say on the topic. I'm sorry if this video is a little short, but I thought it would be an interesting subject to bring up and share. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again. Until then, farewell, and take care everyone.